Okay, everybody, let's get started. My name is Ronnie Jones Cox, and uh, we're going to talk about collaborative programming um, that the library at the University of Tennessee Martin has done and how we're reaching our community uh, by working together. Um, yes, we started recording. Uh, I'd like to take a moment and recognize the support of San Jose State University as our founding partner for this conference. It's been so good so far. Um, so today I would like, if you could take a moment and scan the QR code or click on the link in chat, um, it's going to be a one question survey. It won't take you very long. We're going to use it later in the presentation. Um, today I'm going to introduce myself, uh, what the University of Tennessee Martin is doing when it comes to collaboration on a campus level, on a community level, and then the different levels of libraries in our uh, community. And then I'll follow up with the why we did it, future opportunities, and what we're hoping to get from it. It's a little bit different from what we've been talking about today because not all of them fall under EDI, but eventually in the long run, that's the goal for our university. So behold the enchanter of electronic knowledge and the keeper of the keys to the discovery, aka I'm the Electronic Resources and Discovery Librarian at UT Martin. I don't know if anyone has Canva or has played with their magic right feature, but I absolutely love getting in there and doing that sprinkle little fairy dust on stuff. Some of the, it just cracks me up. You have to do it. If you have Canva, just put your title in and then see what you are. It's very encouraging. It sounds a lot better than electronic resources and discovery library. And I will give you that. So how did it get started? Um, we had a copy cataloger who was going through her ILS um, she didn't want to be an academic librarian, and she worked for an academic librarian. So um, there's some areas that we do that do not cross over, and some areas that they do that do not cross over. So um, there was an offhanded comment about her getting some experience in those libraries. So we began to formulate a plan, um, get all the details in a row. And then, of course, you got to get buy-in from your leadership. So we went to the dean with this idea. Um, boasted about all the reasons why we should do it, how it can benefit us, you know, give them those dollar signs, reason why. Um, and then you had to get buy-in from our community, you know, getting people, other libraries to let you come into their space, let you work in their space. So that's essentially how it got started. It got started with an idea and then getting buy-in from those that um, involved, essentially. You know, alone, we can do so little. Together We Can Do So Much from Helen Keller. Uh, and that was kind of the philosophy behind this. So we're gonna take a look at um, some of the campus collaborations. We've really focused over the past year to try to look for more ways to collaborate with the different departments on campus. The one pictured um, right here is our literary tea. So this event was collaborated with the Writing Center on campus. Everybody on campus was invited. They just came. We had a whole variety of different teas and tea snacks and tea cakes. And then individuals were allowed to get up and read little snippets of their favorite poems or their favorite stories, inspiring works. It was a really good event. Um, it got a lot of people in the library that normally wouldn't come in for such event. So that was pretty exciting. Um, we might look at who we can collaborate more with and bring in maybe the English department on that one for next time we do it. The middle one is our Clue Who Done It event. We just did this last fall. Oh, yeah, last fall. Um, and it worked out really, really good. We worked with the theater department, the theater club, and um, the SGA, which is our Student Government Association. So for the um, SGA, they basically helped us set up tear down. They did a lot of the advertisement for it, which took a lot of uh, stress off of us. They manned our snack station. We just did popcorn and punch. They um, were information hubs set out throughout our stacks so that when students had questions, they can stop and talk to them and say, hey, I'm not quite sure where this location is. Can you point me in the right direction or where this person is? Can you point me in that direction? So it was a lot of great partnership that we didn't have to do um, with us being up there with library faculty. We had extra help for this. Um, and then theater, of course, we give them scripts. 
they rolled with it. They dressed for their character. They came in, they gave a monologue, and then they went up in the stacks and uh, allowed people to come ask some questions and kind of figure it out. So by the end of the day, they had to come back and say, hey, this is who killed the person. This is what library weapon they used, and this is the location that they did. It was a really fun event. Um, it was a great collaboration getting students in. And then the last one I have on here is a care team collaboration. I did this this spring or this fall as soon as I came back from um, break. And it was a really good event to show our students that, you know, the library has resources to help with wellness and stress relief and um, anything under that umbrella that we were there for them as a support. You know, the goal of campus collaboration is to show the students an inclusive space and a community that is there for them that's welcoming, encouraging, and wanting to collaborate with our campus clubs and resources. Um, no, this isn't just focusing on academic library partnerships. This is just the first one. So competition makes us faster, but it doesn't make us better. Collaboration is what's gonna make us better in the long run. So um, we had oh, several public libraries because of course Sarah was trying to be a public librarian. So um, some of the things that we helped with was weeding projects and book sales. This project was super beneficial to Sarah because um, the bulk of this work is something that we don't do as far as like the book sales and how to organize that. Academic libraries, we don't sell books. So um, this gave Sarah the experience and the connections to the type of libraries that she wanted to work for and it gave them a helping hand to get the work done. So for programming for um, public and K through 12 libraries, we've done anything from story time, helping with crafts, leading children in the chicken dance, which um, was a sight to be seen because I had not heard of that song before. And then I was leading it. Um, I don't know about you, but us librarians are very versatile. We can just go with it sometimes. Um, we've also helped with cooking demonstrations. We broke in the new kitchen at the Martin Public Library. Um, they just opened up a demonstration kitchen and one of our librarians went and did a cooking class and taught people how to make cookies. So it was a great experience to cross collaborate with them. Um, we've also done presentations on preservation for the local public libraries, helping the community understand, you know, this is how you keep those old photos that you want. This is how you should store them and take care of them. Those kind of collaborations. We have um, collaborated with guest speakers, of course, on campus. We're constantly having research. We have a supply of researchers that we can bring in and out. Um, so twice a year, we typically try to co-sponsor exhibits. We did an exhibit or an event last year or the year before, and it was about crops and stuff like that, which is beneficial to our community since we're surrounded by farmers. So it was a great way to show that the library is doing research that affects our community, that can benefit our community. Um, so we try to do that twice a year. We also co-sponsor events and exhibits. Um, currently we have the Voice and Votes Democracy in America exhibit at the Martin Public Library that we're collaborating on. Um, we helped get it in, we help advertise it and promote it. It's a really cool exhibit. So if you're in West Tennessee, stop by and see it. Um, I had the great privilege of helping Sarah out with her first ever event as a children's librarian right here. Um, so Sarah's the one in the hat. Um, this was a great event for Sarah. As a new children's librarian, she was able to meet the community that she serves. She was able to entice them to come to her events. Um, I was the big brown dog right there. It was very hot. Um, after setup, I spent the whole day reading books upside down and barking at children. And of course, um, there was that one child that really loves to just play with the mascot. That was fun. Um, but it was a great event and she got great results from this event. She has seen an increase in children in her regular um, events that she has in the library after this event. She's gotten new regular attendees. So that was an exciting event for her. And then the last one that I want to talk about for this collaboration I'll do a little more on the K through 12 on the next one, but was the um, recent project I did. I collaborated with the um, Obine County Public Libraries Children's Library on their juvenile easy graphic novels collection. So I'm going to go into a little more detail about that one since I did a lot of the work on that one. 
So every child is a flower and together they make a garden. This is on their website. And it's so inspiring, inspiring because when we went into this graphic novel collection, that's kind of what we were looking at. We wanted to make a collection that was for the community. So um, we inventory their juvenile graphic novel collection. So when you think juvenile, it's anywhere from birth to 17 years old. We wanted to sort it and target uh, basically the birth to second grade level. Um, so we sorted them out through target age. We used um, children review sites and Amazon to pull the ages for each holding that they currently had. We um, then we did a survey uh, or well, a market analysis. We looked at census and local government reports to determine the number of children that would fall into the pre-K to kindergarten range to find out how many people we were actually serving in this and how big our collection needed to be. We also surveyed local teachers, both daycares, pre-K to second grade, elementary school librarians, public school library or public librarians, um, homeschool co-ops, parents, and even children in that age range to say, hey, are you using graphic novels? Do you see the point in using them? Do you like them? Um, have you seen any benefits? What's the drawback to them? Um, have you used them in story time? That kind of thing. And then for children, it's like, what kind of graphic novels do you like? What kind of, what interests you? Is it by characters that you recognize or is it by genre? So um, just getting that information to really build a strong collection. We also took a look at her usage reports and all this work, she would send us the information like their holdings and um, their usage stats. And me and a couple other um, library students would actually go through it and do the work for her. So she didn't even have to do any of this work. She just gave us the information. We're like, here you go. This is the information you want back. So we looked at the usage reports, determine what areas we were already strong in, uh, where we might need to try to make more of a marketing for that collection of the um, underperforming titles is the reason it's underperforming because it's sitting right next to dog man and that's going to be the only book my eight-year-old picks up um so can we put it on a display can we advertise it can we put it on um our reading list can we do something to see if maybe that will get some interest in it before we just weed it because nobody has read it so um from there we were able to put together policies for how the collection would be weeded i mean they only had four ranges for birth to 17 year olds. So there's not a lot of space at this point. So space and issues. So we really had to look at what we could weed in the current collection, what gaps weren't being filled. Uh, it was a great way to intentionally look at representation and diversity that is presented in our collection. Um, we didn't necessarily have to advertise that that was what we were looking for, but that was what we were looking for. We were able to analyze the collection and ensure that it was well-rounded, that um, they could support any patron that walked in. Everyone would recognize themselves in some part of the collection, you know, and feel like they belonged in that library because everybody should see themselves when they go into a library collection and see something that's for them. This was a really long project, but I feel like it was really worth it. We really liked the results from it. The nicest thing to know about teamwork is that you always have someone on your side. You know, um, we did an all libraries conference, which is this one. It invited um, K through 12 academic public libraries. It was a collaboration with the Obine River Regional Library, who is a resource to several county libraries in West Tennessee. Um, so it's that stage up from academic K through 12 and public. It was a great time to get with the different libraries to share resources and information. Um, it was great to see how um, an open space where librarians could voice frustrations, can voice concerns, can show off work that they're doing to encourage them to say, hey, you're doing great work. Um, whether it's a book band worries or book displays, it was very well in um, programming. It was a great event. I co-presented with one of my students on book repair. Um, I also co-presented on a using humor in the library events. You know, to me, this type of work is so beneficial. I follow several public and K through 12 library pages on Facebook for ideas to use an academic library. It's interchangeable. You might have to 
change the level you're working on, but it's still interchangeable. Uh, one of our student workers is actually planning to get community service hours from the local K through 12 school doing book repair and also helping their staff learn how to do book repair. So there's great benefits coming out of this. We also hosted a disaster prep session, which was another Obine River Regional collaboration. We um, were all together to create a disaster prep plan. It was really great because when you get in that setting where like, oh, I got to write this, you get a brain fog or you only think about recency stuff. So having that atmosphere where you're like, oh, we're worried about water damage because we had a pipe bus, but we're worried about pests because we had a raccoon family in our uh, juvenile section. It was a great way to look at all the different struggle, uh, sorry, struggles that librarians face on a day to day and be able to create that plan for all those different areas. You know, ho having that open discussion really gave us a holistic view um, and it created partnerships for those times of chaos. By the end of the day, we had a great plan and we were excited and we had connections. The last one I want to talk about is a recent one we just did. This is our Unmasking the Scariest. This was the first in our Real Talk series. The event was um, Black students fearlessly facing oh. mental health. This event was so important because it gave the students an open space to discuss what they're going through, what they need from us in the form of support. We took the opportunity to not only listen to their needs, but also to highlight the different resources on and off campus that they might not have been aware of. We collaborated with campus departments such as our care team, our Healthy Hawks, our accessibility. You know, these are departments that can help them and connect them to the resources on campus that can advocate for them, for their teachers um, and their classes if they're struggling. But we didn't want to just stop it for campus resources. We also wanted to go off campus for some key services that the community provides. You know, we had representatives from Weekly County Coalition, Tennessee Department of Mental Health, Cary Counseling, Pathway, which is another counseling. We felt it was important to include these off campus services because not everyone is comfortable going to the campus ones because they're afraid maybe someone will see them. You know, the Palmic Library is inclusive and it's, we're taking steps to bring in programming that the library needs to address some of the worries and concerns that our students are having. Okay, did y'all scan the code? We're fixing to see if y'all scanned it. Dun, dun. I'm gonna pull it over here so you can see why, why we need to do it. Let me switch just to present. And this is your answers. This is what this is all about. You know, getting diverse perspectives, creating those opportunities, connections, the new ideas, you know, community. There's so many reasons why collaboration is so important. And if you have a library that's willing to do it, you know, you got to market on that. So the reasons why we did it, um, I know most libraries, when you first do it, you think, uh, we're understaffed, we're underfunded. So why for academic libraries, um, it was retention. I'm gonna put that back up and see if it'll let me scan so you can, nope, it won't let me, sorry. Um, so for us, it was like, it was retention for us, getting our students at an earlier level, you know, we're creating a lifelong partnership yeah, I will. I will do my slides. I will share them. Uh, we're we're committing a lifelong partnership with the libraries that we're connecting. You know, Sarah. Sarah is always going to be willing to collaborate with us, and that's we're a resource for her, and she's a resource for us. Her library is going to be always there for us. And you know, setting that standard when it comes to programming to address EDI values and concepts will allow us to be an example to our community and campus. We also are reaching potential students earlier. If we can get help at the K-12 public library, we're getting our future students in the library at your library. That means when they get to college, their safe place is gonna be the library. They're gonna seek out the library for refuge and serenity. And that's what we want. This is beneficial to us. Um, from a business standpoint, why not? Every time we're at one of your events, every time we're collaborating, we're advertising our library, we're showing our community that the Palmic Library is more than what is happening on campus. We're doing things, we're sharing that knowledge. We are trying to enforce that mindset that we gotta do more, we gotta be more, we gotta do better. 
you know, and that's just makes us look like a good investment to our donors. We're constantly popping up in their face saying, hey, we're the Palm Week Library. And then eventually we're like, hey, give us some money. So why not? That's why we're doing it for K through 12 and public libraries. Um, the ones that I've talked to from some of the ones that we've worked with them on, it's that shared workload, the ability to have support, backing. Um, I saw on Facebook a while back where a library had 22 bins worth of books that needed to be reshelved after a holiday weekend. You know, having those individuals that can, can come in and say, hey, can you shelve this bin? Can you shelve this bin and just setting them free? is so beneficial and it takes stress off of the librarians it takes stress off of you so you don't have to spend all your day working on that you know many hands make the work light so that's a good reason for you guys and it's a mental relief it's support it's encouraging um we don't face book bans we don't as an academic library i have not seen anyone come knocking on our doors saying hey you need to get rid of this book which we would say yeah, right. We're not. So should there ever be a moment when you have a book removed, make sure your academic library has it. Our library is open to the community. Our community users can come in. So if you had a parent come in and say, I need this book for my kid, but you don't have it, you can say, hey, go over to the Palm Meek Library. They have it. You can get a card from them. You can check it out. You know, just be in that support. We can do some of that programming that might eventually you won't be able to do and we're there for you we're that resource you know some upcoming events I know I'm, I gotta go fast we're gonna do another all-conference library we're doing a mental health break um event um because I had a professor in nursing that wanted to talk about you know the struggles of her students getting through the program uh and the diversity in her program you know, that's a way to get them in the library and get them a resource to maybe remove those barriers. We're going to do another real talk series on abuse and um, drug addiction. And then the Comic Con, just another fun way to get some of our quieter patrons in and have a little more fun. Kind of went through those really fast because I really wanted you guys to be able to ask any questions if you could. Um, so we mentioned to our Dean once about a program and he just kind of stared off into space and he's like, mm. and I'm like, Hey dude, I'm talking to you. And he's like, I'm thinking, who can we get to collaborate with us on this? You know, the Palm Inc. library really has built this culture of collaboration, but it's time for us to take it a step further. It's time for us to bring those EDI topics and to look for collaboration in a way that we can address those to set the foundation for standards and how we expect our community to um, respond to those. Okay, I'm going to open it up for questions. I don't, I don't have a lot of time. Um, if you want my slides, I can see if I can send them to Steve or if you put your email in, I can try to catch it and do it that way. You might have to unmute if you have questions. I tried to talk really fast. It's usually an hour long presentation. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'm going back to the chat to see, does anybody see any questions that I might've missed? I don't know if that chicken dad is his epic. <laughs> I made sure to delete that video. Um, yeah, and I would say if you're not academic, reach out. See, see what you can do. Um, I know another opportunity for um, getting support and help is your local high schools. Um, we have Tennessee Achieves. We have UT Promise. Um, students in Tennessee, all of them need um, community service hours, linking up with the art department to do some programming at art project during the summer or throughout the semester, you know. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of emails. What would you do to help outsiders feel welcome if they're homeless? Um, hmm. I know that's a big topic in bigger cities. We don't have it as much here. Um, we have had some that were no longer students that kind of hung around for a little while. Um, essentially, you kind of encourage them to use the resources as long as we're being respectful, um, that kind of stuff. 
Thank you for sharing that, Tom. Tom shared a librarian's guide to the homeless. Um, as long as they're being respectful to our space, we just do what we can to encourage them and help them get them resources. We have had issues where we've had to have safety and security come and talk to them um, if it's become a big issue. Because, I mean, after all, we are telling these parents that we are keeping their kids safe. So there is that. Do y'all have any more questions? I'm going to not log out and save all these so I can get that done. You know, this chat is a great representation of collaboration. Have you ever had a drama or something that resulted in soured relationships with a partner? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, we're all human, so drama does come up. Um, so essentially... We did have where a department didn't really want to come around for a while, but you like anything like that, you just come to them and you're open and you're honest and you, you communicate with them, apologize if you were responsible, take the high road, um, and then work for the greater good. Our good is to get our students what they need. And I don't want my personality getting in the way of that or the person I'm working with personality get in the way in that. Just remind them of the common goal. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, thank you guys. I hope you are inspired. You guys can do this in your own area, uh, wherever you're from. I believe in you.